These candidates were among the people that we in this community had ever met before. Uh, and that's something to remember. These are, these are people that we have to get to know. We blindly, a lot of times, we, we just ask people about people who we want to vote for. We don't really check it out. Um, a leader who's about to take the reins of an unfamiliar district should be here. He should be walking around the neighborhoods, going to our restaurants, spending money here in our community, and meeting with the other leaders involved with the city and the county. Matt Cutright has done that, and he will continue to do that. He has walked in the neighborhoods with me, he has walked in the cafes with me, we have walked in our neighborhoods, and he is making an impact on the people so they know who he is. It's very important that that aspect be remembered. He's willing to debate. His opponent hasn't talked about that. This is a gentleman that he's going to, his opponent is a 20 year uh, veteran of, of uh, Washington DC and won't debate him. Uh, that just brings a terrible question in my mind for some reason, I don't know why. Matt is staying positive. Hey, you more, <laughs> Would you like the mic? <laughs> Matt, um, my grandfather once said that you judge leadership by the company you keep, the decisions you make, and the ability to keep your nose clean. Matt has done all the things that are necessary to make sure that he is ethically and has the integrity to do what is necessary for Pennsylvania and the U.S. Congress. He has spent months visiting the neighborhoods and cafes along with many others in the Lehigh Valley. He's made a commitment to communicate with our, our society and to get to know how our cities and our counties work. I must tell you, he and his team are working efficiently and they respectfully are working in our area to gain our confidence and trust in this new district. I Please join me in supporting Matt Kyright as our U.S. Congressman. Thank you. Is it okay if I say something before Matt speaks? I got something. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay, I can introduce myself. I can do it. The microphone went off. For those of you that, for those of you that don't know, this is uh, Admiral Joe Sestak. I call him. Um, my microphone went off for a minute, I apologize. And, and he, you look just so familiar in those crowds, I couldn't pick you out. I like uh, that. He's here on behalf of Matt. And in our community, and I want to thank him and welcome him also. And, and uh, you do have a mic, right? Does yours work? Okay. I have to turn mine off. Okay, I'm going to welcome Admiral Sesta. All right. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm really glad to be here today. First of all, I want to thank Easton. You were very, very good to me. Thank you very much. Clap for yourselves. Please. I'm very happy to be here uh, and speaking in support of Matt Cartwright. Um, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why and then I'll come back to Matt. I still spend a lot of time going around the state of Pennsylvania. After the campaign, I went to the six, seven counties. And if I had your email, I'd try to reach out and have at least a gathering to say thank you. And then I went to the major cities of America from Chicago to San Francisco to Austin, Texas, down to Florida, Washington, D.C., to where I had contributors and said thank you. My wife, very gracious, gave me a year. My daughter says, when you get in the job. Because <laughs> I'm in her homework too much. She's 10. And, but I still am going around when I am asked. And I'm glad to do so because I personally Having gone around and having been in a very tough campaign, believe that right now we are fighting for the character of America. And I believe this fight will continue on for the next decade. The fact that so many people are out here and engaged is absolutely impressive. I honestly believe that we are a nation of rugged individuals. I mean, I served in the United States Navy for 31 years. SEAL Team 6. Man, you want to see a bunch of rugged individuals? There you have it. But they always come together to be successful for a common mission. And that's how I feel about the United States of America. We in the military merely was America 
for what made America exceptional, a wonderful nation of rugged individualism aligned with a common wealth, to where we tend to build tall ladders together. And then we have individuals that are brave enough to walk, climb them on their own. And my take is that whenever anybody climbs that ladder to individual success, all we ask of them is to help us add a few more rungs so that our children can climb even higher for their better success, but also for a better America. And in my mind, when you stand and look around Pennsylvania, and I came out on Route 76, 1940, the Commonwealth came together and built that very first in America superhighway that set the pace for the superhighways across America that after World War II led to us becoming the economic superpower that we are today. It's here in Pennsylvania that we actually invested in the very first public school in all of America. Do you remember the year? I wasn't around in 1684, but you remember a century prior to our revolution in Philadelphia, the then governor said we will have a public school and everyone will attend. The rich will pay a reasonable fee and the poor will attend for free. Why? So that all then could contribute to the common weal. You go down to the University of Pittsburgh, public university. Dr. Jonas Salk discovered the very first vaccine to stop that disease that was devastating the children of his generation, polio. All were common investments for the common good so that individuals can then achieve what they want to for their American dream. The story I tell people is I'll never forget arriving off Afghanistan. And that night, in my carrier battle group, I launched off of the aircraft carrier eight pilots. Seven had been in the first Iraqi war. They were vets. They'd been there. They'd done it. We wanted that mission to go well. But the eighth was someone who had never been off the carrier deck over a foreign country, what we call a nugget. It was a young 27-year-old woman flying an F-18. And she proved to be the one that disobeyed my orders that night. Not to die below 20,000 feet unless she or they requested my permission. Because above 20,000, the Taliban could not hit you if they had shoulder-fired munitions. And we wanted a moment if they needed to come lower at 2 a.m. in the morning to see if there might be these endangering missile sites by other electronic measures that we had. Eight special forces had been ambushed. Four had died immediately. The other four radioed for an immediate help, asking these pilots above to strafe. Don't drop a laser-guided munition. They're too close. They were about the distance from here to that Dunkin' Donuts. And those munitions are pretty accurate, but they're not that accurate. She was the only one that felt she didn't have time to ask permission. She dove three times to 3,000 feet at 2 a.m. in the morning. And we don't really practice strafing since the Vietnam War. Those men picked up their dead in the resulting confusion that she caused on the Taliban. And the four men came home alive. When I joined up there in Vietnam, we didn't have women on ships, never mind fly, uh, flying an F-18 combat aircraft. But because she was given a fair individual opportunity, the right to that fair opportunity, the common mission of America better succeeded that night. I'm here today because he understands that in pursuing our American dream, we became an exceptional nation because first we established individual rights, equality to freedom, suffrage to civil rights, ideals that are not attained until they apply to everyone. And when 50% of our population is told in a law that they can just close their eyes and have their body be invaded by a government mandated intrusion of their body, 
That's not what America stands for in terms of discrimination. We are for removing, not imposing, discrimination. And then he understands that is our collective shared investment that builds the ladder for individuals to climb with their own individual effort to be all they can be. That woman on that aircraft carrier, she didn't just speak the word, she did it by deed. That she was ready not only to sacrifice her career, but she was ready to even sacrifice her life for others in a common mission in pursuing her individual right to her, what she had chosen as her American dream. That, to me, is why I'm here. I, I get all the other red meat stuff, but to me, we are in the fight for that ideal. We are not Americans who impose discrimination, we remove discrimination. We are Americans that do not deny how for two centuries America became an exceptional nation. We remember how we did it. This wonderful alliance between individuals who are very darn rugged, just like that woman pilot. But understand that while every person strives for their own individual achievement, they do not measure it apart from the greater efforts. Matt Cartwright is that guy. To step into an arena against the establishment, I think, speaks highly of what he will do. So with that, I'm honored to be here today when Matt asked to bore you with a few words, <laughs> but to speak highly of someone that I believe will actually help move us in this fight for the character of America. We're great. Everywhere I went, they understood what American exceptionalism really was, which is this wonderful alliance I just spoke about. And with that, it's my great honor to introduce to you someone who I got to know during my own campaign who was extremely supportive of me and why I'm glad to be here today to speak about someone who will fight for that ideal and someone who actually helped me. And if I was better, I would have won. But he sure as heck helped me move, try to move us down towards that path. Matt Cartwright. It could be any day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Admiral Sestak. Councilman Warner. Judge Friedberg, thank you so much for being here today and thank you to all of you for taking time out of your day to come here and see me. You know that the new 17th Congressional District is an abomination on a map. It's something that goes from the tip of Carbondale down to the bottom of Easton that has part of Bethlehem Township. It goes over to Carbon and Schuylkill counties. It goes all the way to the Delaware Water Gap. I'm going to need a new set of tires when I get done this race. <laughs> but it's been an education for me because I'm here to tell you I have got to know Easton. Bob Warner's right. I've been here 15 times in the last two and a half months. It has been my pleasure to get to know you to get to know the feel of Easton, to understand the concerns and the needs of Northampton County. And this is a place that I will be proud to represent before the nation down in Washington, D.C. And I'm here to tell you here and now, I will open a district office in Easton as your congressman. Yes. You know, Admiral Sestak is right. What we need in this nation are leaders with vision. Vision with vision for the future of this country. Leaders who aren't just bickering about what happens in 2012 and 2013. Leaders who are thinking about 2040 and 2050. 
and how do we go about keeping America the finest nation on the face of the earth? We need leaders of vision who will be thinking about these things instead of just throwing bombs at each other and spinning each other's statements, engaging in the politics of personal destruction. We've seen all of that go on for far, far too long. What we need are people who are people of vision, who think about these things and think about the direction of America. And you know what we need in America. We need investment in this country. We need investment in our infrastructure. We can't make this country the best nation in the world unless we have the best roads and bridges in the world to make our companies go, to make our small businesses thrive. We can't make this the best nation in the world unless we have a terrific rail system that makes us more efficient, that moves goods more efficiently and greener. And we can't make this the best nation in the world unless we're talking about high-speed rail, ladies and gentlemen. We need to be building it here. They're doing it in China. There are people who don't think we need that. They don't seem to think we need to compete with China. We do. China will roll right over this nation if we don't work hard and invest in our infrastructure, in roads, bridges, rail, and high-speed rail. I come from a place called Scranton, Pennsylvania. We have a railway museum there. And if you want to go visit there from New York or Philadelphia or Chicago, you have to take a bus. <laughs> What's wrong with that picture? We need rail service. It's cheap, it's energy efficient, and it's green. It's something that we need to focus on in the future. We need to address our trade agreements with China. There's a reason gas is going to spike over 450 and higher this summer. It's because demand for gas in China went up 12% last year. It's a simple demand and supply problem. China is making so much gas that we can't, we can't keep up with the price. marching bands in this country. <laughs> and we, we got a good example right over here and we'll give them their chance in just a moment. My program, ladies and gentlemen, is about infrastructure. It's not just roads and bridges and rail and high-speed rail. It's about trade agreements and it's about the crown jewel of infrastructure in the United States and that is education. Woo! We are here in Pennsylvania where the governor is cutting education left and right. We are here in Pennsylvania where early childhood education is being cut. You don't let that happen if you care about the future of America. You invest in early childhood education. Right now, if we're thinking about 2040 and 2050, we're thinking about our kids and equipping them to compete with those jobs that are going to Bangalore, India, and Taipei, Taiwan, and Beijing, China. We have to equip our kids to keep up with that global competitiveness that we see emerging every day. We're, those jobs will continue to disappear unless we have fair trade agreements and unless we equip our children to compete on a global scale. I'm Matt Cartwright, and I am from the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party. Yes! We are the Democrats here. We are the ones who invented Social Security. We are the ones who invented Medicare. We are the ones who stand up for the weakest and the most vulnerable in our society because we know if we don't do it, nobody else will. So I urge you, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Democrats, get out there and work. I am 
running as the real Democrat in this race. I am running for the core values of the Roosevelt Democrats in this race. And I tell you, I need your help. Get out there and vote on Tuesday. Get out and tell your neighbors and relatives to vote on Tuesday. And make sure you do what you always do so well in Easton and Northampton County. Support the Democratic ideals on primary day, Tuesday, April 24. Please come out and vote.